don't know where I'm gonna sleep. I don't know uh, who is gonna receive me. I don't even know how I'm gonna get to the place or outside the airport. And I'm thinking, well, the Lord told me to go, so he's gonna provide. Because that's just what the Lord does, you know, like when he sends you somewhere, he prepares you. It's not like you have to work to get the money and all that stuff. No, you have to get the wisdom. You have to get the word of God that you're gonna carry to that place. So then everything else is provided. You know, you don't have to worry about like everything else. 挑战您的价值观，返璞归真过生活。欢迎收看《十万个为什么》，我是你的好朋友路德。在节目一开始，提醒大家订阅我的频道，并打开小铃铛，千万不要错过每周五的精彩节目哦。The Lord says, "I'm gonna send angels before you, and they will go before you and fight for you and open the door for you and make a way for you." And then I saw it, like I saw a vision of that, like just me entering into the U.S. border and how, you know, this. There were three angels, so these three angels had like a a massive sword. I mean, like they were gigantic, and they that sword was like burning on gold fire, and the demon was, you know, like、uh, the migration people that they interrogate you. The demon was behind her, and so when I humbled myself and I cried for for God to help me, then the angel would like. Stretch his sword, threatening the demon to let go of the woman. The demon would be like, you know, and then the woman would let me into the U.S. border. Wow, without、and、the without vaccine. Vaccine, and, and then I got to the border,、mm-hmm. and I'm like, all right, Lord, so take care of me, <laughs> you know, because nobody's here with me. And then the police guys say, okay, well. The border patrol. All your paperwork is good. You're you're good to go, but there's a little problem. I'm like, oh no, and I'm like, what's the problem, sir? And they're like, well, you don't have vaccine. Where's your vaccine vaccine、uh, certificate? I'm like, yeah, I don't I don't have that. And they're like, well, you're gonna have to leave the country because you cannot enter the country without a vaccine. And I'm praying all the way. I'm like, Lord, you said that I was gonna get here, so Holy Spirit, help me. And interesting, you know. And then I say, well, that's okay. You can still let me in. I, it's all right. I'm not sick. And he's like, oh no, no, no. There's no exceptions. When he said that, I said, oh, okay. There we go. Now the Lord is gonna fight because he he said there's no exceptions. I'm gonna be the exception. The Lord is gonna make a way for me now. And so that was like the open door for me. And I was expecting a miracle, you know. Like I don't know, maybe. Their hearts being moved and tender and changing opinion or something, but no, they were like, "Well, we're gonna call the cops on you so that they escort you out to back to Mexico. Just get a shot, just get a shot, and then you come back, and then you you're good to go." And I'm like, "No." So then the cop comes, and he's like, "I don't want to deal with that guy because the Lord was with me, you know." I'm like, "Yes, yes, yes," because I'm praying, asking the Lord, scatter my enemies. Uh, blind my enemies, confuse my enemies, make a way for me, Lord. And I had already like humiliated myself before, beforehand, you know. So then this guy goes off, and I'm like, "All right, Lord, humble this guy, let me go." And he's like, "No, we're not gonna g- let you go." And I'm like, "Why not? I mean, like, I'm not sick, man. I'm healthy." And he's like, "No, still, it's by law. You cannot enter. It's not like we." Don't want you to enter. It's、mm-hmm. like it's the law,、mm-hmm. and I'm like, but God is above the law, so He'll gonna do it, you know.、Mm-hmm. And I was preaching to them actually. The Lord told me to evangelize them before everything, so I was preaching to them. And then another cop comes, and the same thing. He doesn't want to deal with me. And the third comes, same thing. He doesn't want to deal with me. So then I'm going out, and I'm like, Lord, I thought you said you wanted me to come to the U.S. What did I miss? Did I miss something? And then as I'm, as I'm praying that, I'm, I'm also praying that the Lord makes me invisible. And that he blinds my enemies. This guy far away screams at me from the Mexico border to to you know like the United States border. He's like, "What are you doing? Go that way. This is not the way. Go that way." And I'm like, "Okay, if you say so." So I just turn around. I'm very visible. I have this massive suitcase and two big backpacks. And then the other cop is like literally staring at me, and he does not like see me. You know, like he just doesn't say anything. And he said. Wow, the Lord did make me invisible. That's crazy. <laughs> Finally, you enter into California. Yeah, yeah. So, but you only had seventy dollars, right? Well, not anymore because I had already now paid the ticket. I had only like maybe thirty dollars, or no, actually, 
I had twenty six dollars. <laughs> twenty six dollars. <laughs> twenty six dollars. Twenty six dollars because that's how much the hostel per night cost. But in the midst of it, the Lord reminds me that there's a brother in Christ in in California, in LA. So I call him and I'm like, Hey brother, how are you? I just got to California. Do you want to meet up? And he's like, Where are you? And I'm like, I'm in San Diego. And he's like, Well, I'm currently in LA. So unless you can come, I, I can't help you. And I'm like, Well, how do I go there? Like, how do I travel? And he's like, Just take a Greyhound. And I'm like, How much are the Greyhounds? And he's like, Like twenty-five or fifty dollars. And I'm like, Oh man. Then I have to keep my twenty-six dollars because I was gonna use it to get a place to stay. So I'm, I guess I'm gonna stay awake until the Greyhound. So I feel like the Lord is like, no, sleep and trust me. And I'm like, okay. So I pay for the hostel. I sleep in the hostel. I wake up. I go to the Greyhound station. I don't have money. I'm like, Lord, how am I gonna get there? And I start preaching and preaching and preaching and preaching. So then um, the Lord reminds me that. Um, I can ask like for my mom if if I need to, but I didn't want to. So I'm like, uh, how am I gonna do it? And he like humbles me. So I I ask, I pray beforehand, and I'm like, mom, I need to go with this brother, and he's there, and I just need a ticket for the Greyhound. Can you just send me what I need? And then she's like, sure. And that was the first provision. After that, I get there, and this brother like provides for everything. He's like, well, you can stay with me for three days, and then afterwards, then we can see what the Lord does. And I'm like, okay. So I stay with him three days. I pray. He pays for everything. Like he invites me for for breakfast. You know, he wants to give an offering, and he gives like he pays for the ticket for me to go from there to Kansas City, and then uh, books me two nights in a hotel. So he sends like maybe like six hundred dollars or something, but. I was in the midst of that uh, week because I stayed with him for a week because I prayed and I said, Lord, what am I going to do? I only have three days to stay here. Can you please like give me another place to stay because I don't want to be worried. And as soon as I prayed, like I'm facing him and I'm like, you know, like we're eating and we're praying and he's like, hey, brother, you can stay with me for a week. You know, you don't have to worry about where you're going to stay. I'm like, thank you, Lord. And then I just start doing ministry work on downtown L.A. Uh, well, part of downtown LA, Huntington Beach, um, Santa Monica Pier, and Long Beach. And I just started preaching. And those places I had seen in my dreams, like all those places. And so the Lord starts moving there. Um, and I go by faith, right? I, I don't know where to go. I just have a feeling like I should go there. And then the Lord like shows me uh, all these places. And then, you know, he says, uh, speak to that woman. So we pray for that woman. The woman is restored. We preach to these young uh, youth people and they get touched, they cry out and they're like, thank you for this, I needed this, they, the, the Lord just comforted me. And it's just like, you know, like comfort and comfort and comfort for broken people. And I had had a word before here, before coming, that he wanted to heal people that were depressed and saddened. And uh, I didn't know it's, you know, people in America, like the youth in America are depressed and saddened. And he said the reason, because I was sad and depressed on January this year, and I was seeking the Lord, well, actually from July last year to January this year, and I was seeking the Lord why I was depressed, why I was sad, why I was anxious, why I was like this, because it's just, you know, the enemy. It's just the enemy oppressing you. It's not that you're sad or depressed. And he said the reason why you're sad and depressed is because you have not been spending time with me, you have not been reading the Bible, and you have not been talking to me. And I, I cried because it was true, because... I would read the Bible, but my heart was not when I would read the Bible. It was not there. I would pray and talk to the Lord, but I was not praying with my heart. I was not really being intentional, honest, sincere with Him. I, um, I would just worship, but I was just praising Him with my lips, but my heart was not there. So I repented and I, I cried and I said, Okay, Lord, I'm sorry, but why are you letting me go through this? Because I knew that there was going to be wisdom in the midst of the trial. And he said, because I, I, you're sad and depressed because I want you to help other people that are sad and depressed. Meaning, he wants them to know the reason why they're sad and depressed is because they're far away from God. Then the Lord highlights a, a brother in Christ. I didn't know he was a Christian, but you know, he highlights this man and he shows me a man of God and the fear of God comes upon me. And I'm like, oh no, who's this guy? And I'm like, well, he's my brother, so I'm going to acknowledge him and just go up to him. Then I just like uh, 
you know, preached to him basically, fellowship, and I don't ask for anything. And he's like, hey, brother, so where's your ride? How are you going to to your destination? I'm like, well, I don't know. I'm going to pray and trust the Lord. And he's like, well, why don't you come with us? We, we can drop you off. And I'm like, wow, really? Thank you. So they dropped me off on the hotel. And then once I get into the hotel, they're like, hey, are you hungry? And I was praying because I was hungry. I'm like, yeah, thank you. And we go and grab dinner together and he pays for everything. It's, it's just like amazing. And then I was evangelizing them. I kept preaching to them. I kept giving them words according to their needs. And then, yeah, then we said bye. And there was a drunk, uh, drunkard, yeah, that came and the Lord, like, delivered him. He, like, we prayed because they all were wanting prayer for, for you know, healing and blessing. And I prayed for them. I, I first preached, but then I prayed for them. And then this guy went to the ground. Like, he was standing, he was strong, a demon was, like, manifesting on him. And he just went to the ground. I didn't even have to rebuke the devil and the demon. He just, like, and I was, like, Wow, that was you, Holy Spirit. I did not even lay hands or rebuke. I just pray and let the Holy Spirit do whatever He wants. And then He started to puke out of nowhere. So He got delivered. Uh, I prayed for grace. I prayed for mercy. I prayed that the Lord forgives Him from His sins. And then He just went back up in like three minutes or five minutes after praying for Him. It, it's the, it was amazing. It was like the, the fastest uh, deliverance and healing that I have seen. And that just type of work, you know, like what happened. There were... Other times that I would go to Walmart and I just felt led by the Spirit to just go to Walmart. There were young women there that needed the Lord. They were Muslims. They accepted Christ. And one of them had a lower back pain. And I, I just prayed for her. I said, okay, well, the Lord can certainly heal her right now. So let's just pray. And I said, uh, excuse me, miss. Do you know, can I pray for you for healing for your back? And she's like, sure. But everyone there did not believe in Jesus like the Lord, you know. Um, so I prayed for her. And then I'm like, Father, make a miracle. They're going to believe. They're going to believe because it's they're Muslims. They don't know you. So if you show your power, they're going to believe. And literally, like the, I, the, I feel the power. The Holy Spirit says, um, ask her how she's doing. It is finished. And I'm like, yes, thank you, Lord. And I say, hey, because she couldn't walk. Like she would like walk like this, you know. And I say, hey, how are you? Uh, try something, you know, like see if you're healed. And she's like, thank you. Thank you. I'm good. I'm like, no, no, like, try, like, move or do something that you wouldn't do. And she's like, you know, like, she almost, like, breaks her back. And I'm like, this woman has a lot of faith. And she's like, guys, I am healed. What just happened? I don't feel pain anymore. And I'm like, I told you guys, it's Jesus. Jesus is Lord. He's not just a prophet. And they're, like, all, like, with their mouths, like, wide open. Like, what? And then I gave them like just more words and just encouraged them and they believe like it was at least seven Muslims. So it was amazing that type of things would happen like on a weekly basis, like just miracles and deliverances. In the but midst of preaching, I was asking the Lord for, 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 for financial help for, you know, just for him to come. So I said, Lord, I need money to get a place to stay for like, you know, whatever time you want me here. Can you please send me like something? And he's like, no, just wait, wait and trust me. Because I was very anxious and I was not trusting too much. I knew that he could do it. I was just not trusting. So the moment I started to trust, two days later, this brother, Brayton, he texts me saying like, hey, Gerardo, um, I want to give a, an offering, you know, and I feel very, very generous. I just took all of my money. I cashed out the stock market and everything else. I'm like, who's this guy? Well, what do you mean stock market? I'm like, well, thank you, Lord, you know, and I'm praising the Lord because he's like, do you have PayPal? And I didn't ask him for money. I, I never said nothing. And I text him my PayPal and he says, he sends $3,600 as an offering. I'm like, well, I'm not going to use this money. This is for the kingdom. Um, definitely the Lord is going to build something up. So I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I, it, I felt it was for rent for me to have a place to stay. But also I needed a car to travel and preach and so I told him I said hey brother so I after praying I feel like I could buy a car and live in the car and then just preach and travel and I, I really feel like this money is just for rent but I think this is wiser because that way you know I can travel and have a place to stay in the meantime too I can sleep on the car and he's like brother you know what let me just buy you a car okay forget about that money you keep that money and let me buy you a car and I'm like 
no, 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 this is not right. This guy is crazy. What is he doing? And because the Lord was breaking off a bunch of things of uh, unworthiness in my heart, I would be like, no, this is not right. I'm not worthy. I cannot accept this. He was like, accept it, you know? And so I was trying to be humble. And I said, well, I'm going to use this offering. You don't buy anything. But nothing worked. I could not pay because PayPal withhold the money for like a month. So I could not even use that money. So he ended up buying me a 1981 380SE Mercedes-Benz. And it was amazing. I was like, wow. And then I used half of the money to fix the car and half of the money for a place to stay in the meantime. And then when the car was fixed after a week, the Lord said, now by this, I traveled from Panama City Beach to Orlando. And from Orlando, I bought, like he buys the car there. And I evangelized the guy, the guy that was selling me the car. The Lord would not lift up the payment unless I evangelize him. So I evangelize him and then the payment came. Like as soon as I'm, I'm preaching and seconds later the payment came. And we were waiting 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes and it would not come. As soon as I open my mouth and start preaching, the payment is lifted up and comes. So that was another one. So then um, I went to Cocoa Beach um, and then I fixed the car there because there's a mechanic there that knows how to fix old Mercedes. And the Lord said, because I'm preaching and I'm evangelizing, but I'm praying, asking the Lord where to go next. And he says, pick up your, stand up, pick up your mat and come follow me. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, Lord, I don't understand. He says, leave all things behind and come follow me. And I said, I still don't understand, Lord. I thought I already left everything. I, I, I left my mom, I left my house, I left my brother, I left everything. What do you mean? And an understanding came. All of your stuff, the car and all of your stuff inside the car. And I'm like, yeah, no, that must just be my flesh. Why would the Lord take the blessing that he just gave me and the car that is just brand fixed, like almost brand new, you know? And I'm like, but if the Lord wills, he's going to take it away anyway, so I'm not going to worry. Two hours later, they tow, they tow the car away. I'm sitting on a, on a, on a gas, uh, gas, gas station because I don't have any more gas, so I'm praying for financial provision for gas. And the, um, I'm asking for five dollars because I had five dollars, and that somehow I don't know why this cop comes. I probably it's just they call the cops thinking I was just like a thief or something, and because it, I mean it was at night, you know, and I was just like sitting on the car. So they call the cops. The cop takes a picture of the tag. I didn't know the tag was fake because the guy that sold me the car told me that he has a contact that can get me a tag from the DMV for three months for $350. So I, I pay that. The tag ended up being fake. The police says, well, we're not going to arrest you because we found out that everything that you said is true and that the car is not stolen and that, you know, you don't own the car yet because it's not on your name, but we're going to have to tow the car. And so you're free, but we're not going to let you go with the car. And I said, okay. So I prayed and I said, Lord, now what? It's all your money, $4,000 going to waste now, $5,000, you know? And I text Brayden and I'm like, brother, this just happened. And he's like, brother, I think you should forget about that car and find another car under $8,000 and I'll buy it for you. I'm like, this guy is just crazy. How, <laughs> how can he do that, you know? Like, he's pretty rich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking. <laughs> And so I'm like, how can he do that? I'm like, brother, no, I feel terrible. How can you just throw away a car like that? And, and all the money, what about all the financial provision? And he's like, don't worry about money. That's not a problem. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, I don't not, I'm not going to accept that because it's just too much. But I, I know, like, at the same time, I want it. So I, I pray to make sure it was him. Otherwise, I don't want it, you know? And so he reminds me of a dream, a promise that the Lord gave me. That he was gonna give me a brand new car and then i'm like oh so maybe he wants me to have a car so this guy comes through i find a car the lord says buy that car that's the car that i'm gonna give you and i'm like okay and i say look brother the only reason why i'm gonna get this car and i'm choosing this car i'm going off of a dream that the lord gave me in mexico um like you know some months ago and it's because that's the card that I chose in the dream, okay? It's, a, it's from the Lord. And he's like, brother, you know what? The only reason why I'm going to buy you that card is because I also had a dream 
where I was seeing a white Mercedes and a black Mercedes and I chose the white Mercedes and that's the exact same car that I saw in my dream and I'm like wow so the Lord really is going to give me that, that car so then he pays for the car and then I go back to Orlando with another seller same thing the payment doesn't come through unless I preach so I had to preach with him for a day so I stayed the whole day preaching to him and ministered to him then the next day I keep preaching to him and then the payment comes through and then the other half payment doesn't come through but he because the Lord did a work on his heart and repented he said hey you know you can leave like it's okay if there is like two thousand dollars three thousand dollars missing right now I trust you and he had trust issues he couldn't trust people mm. so the Lord healed that that part of his heart